You're listening to Me and Paranormal You with your host, Ryan Singer. It's more fun to believe. Third, third year, year bonus. Not just a bonus, an extravaganza. Hey everybody, thank you for listening to a third year bonus extravaganza, apparently. Um, my name is Ryan Singer. Thank you for listening to the show. If this is your first time ever listening to Me and Paranormal You, the podcast, formerly known as The Mindcast, still currently known as The Mindcast, welcome. A third year bonus is typically a solo episode. The last one we recorded, I say we because my producer, Nigel, chimed in for the first time ever on the microphones and let me know just how much I did not appreciate his services. So, you know, you know, making a conscious effort to do more appreciation and gratitude towards Nigel since then and moving forward. I honestly, I didn't even know Nigel was a part of the show. Um, I got to turn down my volume just a little bit because I'm, I think I'm coming in kind of hot here. Uh, anyway, so I, you know, I didn't even know Nigel was the producer of the show, but he's been here since the beginning, it turns out. Thank you. There's been a lot going on in the world of the paranormal. I am constantly getting uh, strange reels sent to me on three different social media platforms by my mother, who is retired and now takes it upon herself to send me every strange, paranormal, mystical, supernatural, wild thing that ever shows up on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook, or YouTube for that matter. So what a, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. She, I don't think she's discovered, you know, Jeremiah Stitchin yet, uh, or Stitchin. Uh, I'm, I'm not into Jeremiah's interpretation of, of all that, in case you were wondering. So, uh, moving on, uh, gosh, I mean, you know, we're going to do our best to be in the moment and we're going to, you know, you know, show gratitude, be, be grateful, be gracious, and try to figure out what is actually happening in this moment in time. I am recording this during the daytime, which quite frankly, feels weird for me. I usually will record 30 year bonuses late at night, some, you know, one in the morning or, you know, 11, whatever time it is. And, you know, that's when, you know, the woo woo wild ones are out and about. And therefore that's why I'm out and about at that time because I'm a woo woo wild one. Let's do a roll call here. Who would buy a woo woo wild one shirt? I, I, I'm getting ready to go design I've just decided in this moment of now that I'm going to design a Woo Woo Wild One shirt. I'll probably be selling it on on the road this summer when I do gigs. I just have to figure out, you know, you know, I don't like, uh, I shouldn't say I don't like, I try to stay away from traditional black tees, but I have done some black t-shirts. The If Ghosts Aren't Real, What's That Behind You t-shirt was, was, I thought that shirt, I thought I was going to sell a million of those. I'm not going to lie to you. And I still got some left and I designed them five years ago. So I don't know. I, I'm filled with hope and ambition when I come up with an idea and I believe it will succeed and I behave accordingly. And that's why I have so much credit card debt. Now, I'm not going to stop believing out there. I want you to know I ain't going to stop believing out there. Okay. So we're going to keep believing. It's more fun to believe. That's the motto of the show. So I got to talk to you about, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm going to insert this clip or not. It is, okay, let me tell you why I'm not sure I'm going to insert a clip of audio that I recorded on my phone a couple weeks ago. If you listened to the Bernie Taylor conversation, the experience that came out a couple weeks ago as of this being released, you'll know I love that guy. I love Bernie Taylor. That's the second chat we had. The first one we had was six years ago. And we're talking about, you know, the gallery of discs, the Castillo K, you know, artwork from human ancestors, you know, a couple hundred thousand years ago. Remarkable, amazing, beautiful, 
transcendent, you know, themes, the, uh, the archetypes of, of the ancient human mind playing out in art forms, uh, written, spoken, sung, music, all, you know, performed all it's as someone who fancies himself a an artist and a performer a creative type it resonates with me quite deep quite deep or quite deeply it resonates with me deep in a deep way i don't know why a friend of mine like 12 years ago was shitting on adverbs and you know the ly and Saying that, you know, specifically in regards to writing and, you know, he was like quoting someone, a writer saying it's lazy writing if you, if you use adverbs and, you know, I have a creative writing degree. I'm not trying to toot my own bassoon over here. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, what's, what's, what's a word that rhymes with bassoon that also kind of means playing something. I'm not going to, you know. I'm not going to buffoon my own bassoon over here, but I've been known to buffoon my own bassoon. I, you know, I have a degree in writing, so I, I think I know a little bit about it only because I do so much of it. Now it's a very individualistic, God, that, that one almost didn't come out. Individualistic. It's a very personal experience writing. And I think we can look through the poets, the writers, throughout history. And we can understand that there's no one way you should write. So, I don't know, all this L.Y. hate, you know what I mean? I'm on the L.Y. train, dude. Like, you know, L.Y., you know, Lee. Okay, what was I even talking about? So, um, oh yes, Bernie Taylor, before Orion, brilliant book, groundbreaking, named the giraffe after my late grandma Jesus, Marjorie. Can you believe it? In, in case you don't know grandma, I call her grandma Jesus in a very loving way because she was so hardcore Catholic, like apocalyptic Catholic, like Jesus was coming back before she died, all this, you know, the prophecies, you know, every week, no prophecies. And so he, I loved that woman and still do. So Marjorie was her name, and he named the draft Marjorie. Unbelievable. Marjorie, forever etched in history. <laughs> drafts. I mean, God, drafts. God, I get excited about drafts. Sometimes I'll think about a draft. Is there, is there something wrong with me in like the, the best way possible that when I just think about a draft, I just get juiced up. I'm getting jacked up over here. Okay, so... Thinking about drafts. Okay, <laughs> okay, I could think about drafts all day long. So, I watched, there's a series on Netflix, The Unknown. It's, called, it's a documentary series, I believe, and each episode is a different subject. This one is called The Unknown Cave of Bones. Not sure I've talked about this uh, on the podcast since the interview. I, I'm, I'm almost certain I haven't. I watched that documentary and oh wow i cannot recommend that any higher than i'm recommending it to you right now a beautiful beautiful documentary there's only one friend of mine who i've recommended it to so far that has told me they watched it and they and they sobbed and and why is that a thing well i'll tell you because because i sobbed you know what the reason i don't want to insert this clip is because it's too vulnerable and maybe I should lead by example, not lead by example. Maybe I should just put my money where my mouth is. Brene Brown would be so mad at me if I didn't just be vulnerable. Vulnerability is the key to connection, right? God, Dr. Brene Brown. Huh. You know, I don't believe in kidnapping. But if there was someone I was going to kidnap that would enjoy it and like, be, oh, I'm so glad you kidnapped me. Now we can hang out for a day. It'd be Dr. Brene Brown. I'm not advocating kidnapping in any way. But if someone, oh, let's not call it kidnapping because if they if they enjoy, let's call it um, they get scurried away for an adventurous day, unexpectedly, 
unexpectedly scurried away for an adventurous day. It would be Dr. Brene Brown. And we could just, I could just tell her how much I love her. Anyway, so let's do this. I'm going to insert this clip even though, oh my God, it's embarrassing because I'm, you're going to hear it. You'll hear it in just a second here. So let's do that. Let me insert that right now. Um, this is audio that I recorded on my iPhone. So the audio is not awesome, you know, like the setup I got here, you know, because I did upgrade the setup about a couple months ago, a few months ago. So I'm, I'm hoping that the audio quality is good for you in your ears. So uh, this is what you're hearing is just me recording on my iPhone, like in the moment. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. But hey, be vulnerable. It's okay to be vulnerable. Okay. What are we afraid of? I'm afraid people are going to judge me for being such a sob monster because of a documentary. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's listen to that now. And you can hear my real time response to the unknown cave of bones, which ties directly into the conversation that I had a couple weeks ago with author and animist Bernie Taylor. I just finished watching The Unknown Cave of Bones, which was recommended to me from uh, Bernie Taylor. And uh, why? I don't get it. <laughs> um, you can probably hear it in my voice. I, I think this is a great companion piece to the interview we did. And I was, and still... <sighs> I still am overwhelmed emotionally watching it and I'm not sure what is happening. I don't know why. It's like an anthropology, anthropaleontology documentary and I am uh, I am like beside myself here. Uh, there's a moment towards the end and I'm not going to give any spoilers, so don't worry. There's a, a, a moment towards the end where I just, I lost it. I, I just couldn't, I started uncontrollably sobbing. I was sobbing. The beauty, the complexity, and the... Uh, I feel so connected to this. I don't know why. It's overwhelming to a certain degree, and I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, I'm confused by it. I think there's a difference, but... I... To say that this has taken me by surprise is an understatement. I don't know why I'm so moved by the story of the Naledi and the discovery here, rising star cave systems, but... Needless to say, um, maybe I'll talk about this more in, on, over on the Patreon page. I don't want to give any spoilers, but um, I mean, it's a documentary. I mean, I, you know, it's not like it's a movie spoiler, but still. Um, but there's, yeah, there's one specific part that just put me completely over the edge. And there's some emotionality in this documentary, for sure. Uh, people's life work and their investment uh, and the profundity of discovery and things like that. But, oh my gosh. I loved it. I loved it. And, uh, wow. I, I didn't see this happening today me sobbing over things discovered in a cave. And maybe that's why life is so beautiful. And there you have my thoughts uh, recorded in the moment while watching The Unknown Cave of Bones. Beautiful documentary. I guess that's a great reminder that, yes, I was, I, I was confused emotionally about the strength of the emotions I was having uh, more than I'm not embarrassed by, by crying. I, I think that's a shame if, if one were to be. 
Anyway, let's take a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back and talk more about that. Okay, so we're back. Welcome back. And for patrons, just a reminder, you didn't hear any commercials, because for $3 a month, you can get all episodes of the Mindcast ad-free. Who needs capitalism? I'm telling you. As soon as, uh, you know, the collapse of capitalism happens, it's in its late stages, we know that, and we're a socialistic society, um, and there, there was not going to be any ads on this podcast or any other podcast. Isn't that going to be just, isn't that just going to tickle your, tickle your wallet bone? I guess which would be if you're a man or if you, if you're just a person, I should say. Who likes to carry your wallet in your back pocket? I guess that'd be your pelvic bone. I'd buy your pelvic. Wait, who's this coming in? Oh, I'm Dr. Silly. Okay, we do not need Dr. Silly coming in here. But hey, time for your checkup. Okay, we don't. What is. That's not. That's. It's. This isn't that kind of podcast. Okay. Oh, sounds like someone's got a case of the not so sillies. Okay, we don't need. Dr. Silly showing up. I wish I, I honestly wish I would have, uh, you know, written down the names of the various characters who have shown up during 30 year bonuses over the years. Cause I have no idea who they, who they are and, 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 you know, what they're up to nowadays. We should do a class reunion. Anyway, I want to uh, circle back to the cave of bones from the Netflix series, the unknown and how it ties into the, the chat I had with, with Bernie Taylor and, you know, animism, naturalism, and the history of the human creature, the animal that we are, and the archetypal matrix that we're living in that Bernie got into a little bit. And it is really, it is really profound to think about it. And when you see artwork, on the walls of caves from 250,000 plus years ago. One can't help, I can't help, but be absolutely floored by this emotionally. And I'm not trying to spoil the documentary or anything like that, but I will say this. I have never felt more connected to the human animal on a large scale than when I am experiencing art in some form, communally, whether I'm performing that art or, and some people are like, you're calling your comedy art? Yeah, yeah, I am. Or whether I'm an audience member or a community member experiencing it, looking toward the stage or towards the performance area or listening or reading it, I feel so deeply connected to to everyone and everything else. And that leads to an awe of surroundings. Now, this is going to sound like a strange segue, but let's, let's try to, can we, can we try to be grownups for a second? Okay. I need everybody to be a grown up. Okay. I'm going to call a television timeout here real quick. I need everybody to be a grown up. Put your grown up, put your grown up hat on. Okay, I am this morning. I'm using the bathroom. Be, let's. I said. I said. Let's be a grown up now. Okay. Try not to visualize. If it makes you feel any better, just visualize me completely clothed. I, you know, I sit on toilets, but I still keep my pants and my drawers, my undergarments on. Um. I have to do laundry a lot because of that. Anyway, I'm a sitter, right? I'm a sitter whether I'm, you know, I'm a sitter whether it's a pee or a shit. You know what I mean? It's you sit because I'm not an animal. I mean, I'm an animal, but I'm not a monster, right? This is a no splash zone. I always sit when I can. It's better for your bladder. You get more out. It's just, and it's you don't make a mess. Gosh, okay, anyway. That's when I'll die. People are like, oh, you sit like a girl. Yeah, because guess what? Girls aren't filthy. If that's how you want to frame it in your 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 dualistic mind, first of all, which I have a lot of problems with, but second of all, yes, I sit. I pee like a girl then, John. 
if that's how you want to think about it. Anyway, I pee like a mature, clean person. I think that's what you mean, John. I don't know who John is, and I apologize if your name is John and you're listening to this. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to... uh, <laughs> we're not going to get into that. So we, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the, t- <laughs> I'm using the bathroom today and I look over to the kitchen sink or to the kitchen sink. <laughs> what an asshole. What an asshole using the bathroom in the kitchen. I am, I'm sitting in the sink, right? So of the kitchen, that's where I use the bathroom. So I'm in the bathroom. I look to my left and the bathroom sink is to my left. I noticed the countertop, and as I noticed the countertop, I noticed the edges, and then I noticed the wallpaper, and then I looked down and I noticed the tile floor, and I noticed the caulking in between the tiles, and then I noticed where it meets the carpet of the bedroom because the door is open to the to the bedroom, and then I I look I, I circle back and I my view comes back into the bathroom and I look up at the wall and there's a toilet paper roller that has a roll of toilet paper on it and I'm thinking how many components go into just this toilet paper roll being here within arm's reach I'm not gonna lie to you it's a little far away but I got long enough arms because I'm six feet tall so I can get there I, I guess my arms are three and a half feet or roughly. Two and a half feet, I guess. I don't know, cause whatever. I don't know the, you know, the the Venn diagram of the human body, that Da Vinci, you know, blah blah blah. blah. So, and I'm realizing, oh my God, somebody created the roller, right? Someone invented the roller. Someone invented the screws that keep the roller into the wall. Someone invented the wall, the you know, the the drywall or the wood wall thing. If someone, inv- you know, geometry goes into this, mathematics goes into this, science you know, physics, you know, we're talking about gravity with the, the toilet paper roll rolling. And then if you hit it too quickly, then it unravels. And then we're talking about, you know, a, a you know, what is it? A, uh, you know, a wrapping machine or whatever it is that, that, that wraps the toilet paper roll together in the factory. Um, you know, the trees, you know, that created or that were the, uh, the origin of this toilet paper and then, you know, other chemicals, et cetera, added in. And I'm thinking, holy shit, dude, all of this comes back to like language and numbers and math and, 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 and communication and logic and creativity and the imagination and dreams. And I'm just like, oh, I'm like sitting on the toilet this morning and I am just overcome with just the vast expansiveness of the human mind and creativity and, and, and the reflection of such a thing staring at me on an everyday basis as I walk through the imagination of people who came before me, as I interact with the dreams and the hopes of those who had a crazy idea one day and found time to bring it to life like Dr. Frankenstein. And I'm just like, oh my God, this whole world is fucking amazing. Holy shit. And then I, I was like, I got to finish using the bathroom here. I got to, I, I got to like have a day. Right. And then I'm like, have a day. And then I'm looking, I'm like, I got socks. I got shirts. I'm like, and these these moments where I'm just overcome with the with the brilliance and the limitless possibilities that come from deep within the mind. And many of us would believe that inside these these little you know, these little meat mangoes inside our skull. I'd like to think of the brain as a mango. I would never I mango is my favorite fruit. But I would never eat a brain, okay? Um, you know, I, I'm sure I have on accident. Uh, not a human brain. I mean, I'm sure a bug has flown into my mouth on accident. I've swallowed spiders, you know, according to statistics. They have brains. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I could cry right now thinking about all the brains I've eaten. Oh, my God. I, I feel like such a monster. I'm actually getting a little teary-eyed. <sighs> 
deep within this brain is the anchor point of consciousness. Allegedly, probably, maybe, somewhere in the maybe it's maybe it's in the heart, right? There are there are brain cells in the human heart, scientists have found that some they have the same cell, cellular makeup in, in many ways. So we think with our heart, we think with our brain, we think with our mind, we use our consciousness, right? And so so these these ideas that come deep, 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 it's like it's like house of leaves. You know, everybody's brain is house of leaves. It just it looks so small inside your skull, but then you go inside and it just keeps tunneling deeper and deeper and deeper. And there's really, really no end to it. And you could maybe think of it as a quantum level that is just a vast landscape. And maybe you have a memory palace and maybe it's filled with great memories. And maybe you're like me and you, you read that, you know, well, you did the audio book of that one book and, and you're like, I need a memory palace. And you got really addicted to trying to have a memory palace and remember, you know, a whole deck of cards in order. And then you realize, oh, I got other shit to do. I don't have time to just only devote myself to trying to remember remember the things that have already happened. I want to try to experience new things that haven't happened yet. Oh my God. And then you're like, oh, what was I even talking about? And then you realize this is all happening inside your mind. The consciousness, the deep, the deep, the tunnel, the tunnel goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And on the walls of the caves of the deepest recesses of our mind are the archetypes. That's the artwork. It's like the gallery of disc, right? So you have the artwork of hundreds of thousands of years ago, the human ancestors in the Homo erectus or Homo Homo erectus or whatever, Homo Homo sapien or whatever it is. And they've, they've, they've created these, you know, they've painted the walls of the history of our minds. And so we have these collective thoughts, these, these symbols that represent things to us and, they're called archetypes. And these archetypes play themselves out in extreme ways sometimes. Like a Tony Soprano would be an extreme play out of an archetype. Um, I guess you could even say major presidential elections really tap into the archetypes of certain things, right? And Because then you can really like elicit emotion or fear or excitement out of people and you know advertisers and marketers have have exploited the you know the archetypal matrix um you know once we figured it out once it became figure outable people will exploit it to try to make financial gain or whatever else power try to accrue more power that it, that can be the darker side of this obviously but then you think about the lighter side, because I don't want to get into the darker side here. So we're talking about these archetypes, and we're talking about these symbols. And what do they mean? And they show up in our dreams. They show up in psychedelic visions. They show up in waking visions. And I'm trying to sleep at 3.30 in the morning last night and I can't sleep because I'm just like, well, why does psychedelic, why do psychedelic visions exist? Right. And, and <laughs> it's like, a, what an existential crisis I'm having at three in the morning, three 30 in the morning. I just watched, I rewatched the 2011 cinematic masterpiece rise of the planet of the apes because I'm making myself rewatch the three movies. Uh, Cause then I think it's dawn of the planet of the apes and the war of the planet of the apes. I think, 2011, 14, and 17. Um, the only reason I know that is because I had to look them up multiple times to make sure I watched the, the, them in the correct order before the new one comes out uh, sometime soon in theaters because my brother and I have been going to Discount Tuesdays and we watched uh, Kong vs. Godzilla a couple nights ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, I went and saw the second Dune. God, these are good movies. Very different movies. Uh, but, you know, Kong vs. Godzilla was a fun romp. That's for sure. So, anyway, I love Godzilla there. I love Godzilla. If I had to pick between Kong and Godzilla, uh, I just love God. I know Kong is, you know, the great, you know, the titan that's protecting humans, but I love Godzilla, dude. I love Godzilla. And... It's so funny. I, I had to use uh, I had to use the bathroom because I was getting too hopped up on Coca Cola Classic, watching the movie, 
and I'm and in the hallway of the theater itself, not in the main hallway of the movie theater, but you know, when you walk down the stairs and you have to go to out a hallway out the door to get into the main hallway. Anyway, there's a couple there and they, they sound, and I walk by them and they're, they're startled by seeing me because they were in an argument and it sounded like they were on the precipice of a breakup. And it just occurred to me and it's just like, Oh, of all places to break up, you know, like at a movie where two sworn enemies have, found it within themselves to put aside their differences, to come together and be a team. You know, mortal enemies, Kong and Godzilla, who just try to murder each other at first sight. And and you're going to break up at that movie? At a movie where, a movie where if nothing else, you should be coming together and putting aside, I mean, if Kong and Godzilla can put aside their, their, their bloodlust, uh, and, and their differences, uh, I, I think, I think you guys can too, you know, uh, I hope they're doing okay. I hope they're all right. So anyway, I honestly have no idea what, what got me there. I got sidetracked. So now here we are. So the, the idea though, that these archetypes exist and, you know, good versus evil and, you know, what is right to do, you know, the hero and the hero's journey that we talk about with Bernie Taylor and our original talk. And we touch on a little bit, you know, it's the journey, it's the transformation. And what are these symbols? Oh, I was talking about psychedelics. And so these, these archetypes, do they show up, you know, and, and you know, as we know, they do. They show up in our dreams and our, our waking visions and our psychedelic trips and, and other times. And it's 3.30 in the morning or whatever, because I watched, that's right, because I was watching Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And I was like, uh, no, it was actually 2.30 because I thought to myself, am I going to watch the next one? And I was like, I can't watch the next one. Like, I'll be up. That'll, it, that one is longer, and it won't be over until 4.30. It'll be after 4.30 in the morning. I was like, I don't got nothing to do. And I was like, I got a lot to do. And I was like, okay, I'll save it for tomorrow or some, or some other time. So, any hoodles. Any hoodles. Oh, there's someone outside running in the ring. Way to go. I'm proud of you. You go get it. You know, get that outside time in. I love that. I love seeing that. Any hodels. Why do we have these psychedelic visions? And why, when people smoke dimethyltryptamine, are so many people seeing the similar thing? And it's these archetypes. Is it is it easily explained away by these archetypes, these symbols? And they're in our brain, right? And, you know, psychedelics cause hallucinatory visions, hallucinations. And my question is, why? Why do these chemicals exist in our brain? And I know it's a real thing, okay? I'm not going to be like, I'm not over here being like, hallucinations are a lie. Now, I will, <laughs> that's a whole, yeah, we're not trying to go there. So why do these chemicals exist? And, and there doesn't have to be an answer that create visual hallucinations and auditory hallucinations as well. I've had auditory sleep paralysis and I know other people have as well. But why do these chemicals exist in our brain that will make us see things that aren't there or quote unquote aren't there, that aren't real? even though they're just as real as anything else that we're seeing, I suppose. Well, it's only real if, you, you know, I've, I've, I've always had this, as much as I'm a woo-woo wild one and I, and I love all of this stuff and I'm in a, you know, um, uh, you know me, I'm not, I'm not a materialist. You know, I'm an idealist. But... I mean, I'm, I lean towards idealism, obviously. Um, many of the things of idealism I, I cling to. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> I cling to them with my hands as if they're material things. So, 
Wow, I just called myself out on some real bullshit there, didn't I? Wow, what an idealist you must be. So anyway, these material things, right, that are real, we can get our hands on them, they're real. For, for, for many times, that's how I kind of would, you know, anchor myself back into the physical world or something during a trip or, or something else like that, right? Or if I was having a similar experience to that, I would just be like, okay, what is real here? I can touch this. This is real. This desk, this desk is real. I know this is real. This is anchor me. Get me anchored back into the 3D world, please. And there's a, there's a fear when we transcend the 3D world that, that comes over many of us. You know, it's the, you know, or it's, you know, when the, when the rush of the psychedelics comes on or, or, you know, some other hallucinatory vision of some kind or something like that. I, it's a very similar effect when I'm having powerful Reiki done on me uh, from my shaman, Sarah Goff. I will, I'll have this moment. Where I'm like, holy shit, I'm getting ready to start tripping my balls off. Um, excuse my language, but that's how I talk. So why, why does this happen? Right. And and where, where does it come from? What is the origin? Well, we, we can see through the ancient cave art, we can see patterns and we can see artwork that speak to these archetypes. And I'm going to tell you something, and I'm a little rusty on the knowledge of it, but when it comes to you know, the big powerful woman that many people see inside DMT world. There's a really strong connection to, gosh, which, uh, which level or dimension is it from the Book of Law, from Crowley, uh, where people go and they see this big powerful woman. Anyway, to me, there's, there's definitely a correlation potential. Oh, definitely, maybe. If 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 I had a if I had a twenty dollar bill for every time I said definitely, there's probably a thing like that. I would be a millionaire. You understand? I would have my compound somewhere by hot springs, the healing waters of the of the boiling soup of Earth. God, get me there. Get me there right now, please, please. It's so cold. I'm in Ohio. It's so so cold all of a sudden. It was hailing today. I was out driving around and it was hailing. I just, you know, I like to drive in the hail. Hail, no. Yes, I do. Hail, yes. So, there's no rhyme or reason for any of this, if you're wondering, if you're curious. Release, release expectations, please. And let's take a moment to release our expectations for outcome when it comes to the quality of this podcast. And we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick break. And we come back, you know, I don't know. Hopefully Dr. Shilly doesn't show back up. Oh, it's time for another checkup. Oh, God, he's back. $3 a month gets you no commercials and no Dr. Silly checkups as well. Or maybe unlimited Dr. Silly checkups. And we're back. And we never went anywhere if you're a patron. Patreon.com backslash Ryan Singer. Thank you. I love all the support over there. I love the community we got over at the Patreon page, ad-free experiences. I'm also, I posted a tease to Fitz, Friends in the Sky, the documentary that I've been consumed with editing. And as soon as we're done here recording this, we're going to get back to it. I'm going to be editing all night. And then, you know, if I can get enough work done, maybe I'll reward myself with, you know, um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or whatever it is, and whatever the second one is. So... I mean, I love movies like that. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a habit of not lying to you anyway. But gosh, I love a good, I love a good romp. I love a good movie where the animals take over and say, hey, here's a little taste of your own medicine. How about that? Oh, we talking about medicine. No, we're not Dr. Silly. We're not talking about medicine. We, we don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't need Dr. Silly interrupting the program anymore thank you very much so anyway these are these are just like some thoughts about um the unknown cave of bones the conversation i had with bernie taylor recently and 
I hope you enjoyed also the conversation with Dr. Jeff Tarrant that just came out earlier this week. Man, it's the second second time I've had the uh, you know the pleasure of of chatting with Dr. Jeff. I, I'm calling him Dr. Jeff, I guess. And so, just a really really fun conversation. And when it comes to the measurable aspects of psi phenomena in the human brain and being able to map out the brain, there's some conversations I've been having with Jeff about something else. And it is my hope and, you know, the, you know, it is my hope and therefore it will, you know, be my manifestation, uh, you know, at some point, definitely, probably, we're going to try to get Jeff involved in some investigation type aspects moving forward, depending on availability and interest to add scientific measurement to the paranormal investigations that I've been doing is that's an interesting component for me. And I'm, I'm a lover of hermeticism. And, and even though I'm, I'm an idealist, I'm not anti-science, you know, I'm, science has done, done a many wonderful and great things. I mean, have you seen these photos of the planets that we're getting from these satellites that NASA's posting? Holy smokes. I mean, that's the... It might be one of the only reasons I'm still on Instagram is because of NASA's Instagram account. And, oh, I have to be for my career. Oh, do I? Do I really? Um, NASA's Instagram account is the only thing keeping me hanging on. It keeps me hanging on. Or there's a, there's a great song. Uh, I was getting ready to say I wish I could sing. I can't sing. And, you know, I'm going to take some voice lessons. 47 years old. It's time to take some voice lessons. Anybody out there want to give me voice lessons? I'll pay you for voice lessons. So, oh, are we getting, no, we're not getting close to the end here. I have to, uh, you know, move this, move some things around here because, you know, we're not, we're not calling this quite yet. Ron, actually, excuse me, Ron, Ron, if I could say something real quick. Oh, I would like that. Nigel, you're back. I, Nigel, I didn't know we were going to be talking again. Is I, 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 I really don't think that this needs to be a, you oh, know, every third year oh, bonus I record, you I need to really, jump in. You don't uh, want to be yeah. part of the show then? No, that's the wrong. No, no I get I, it. I am a part of the show and I have been. Okay. And I deserve okay. To be. Okay. State your piece then. State I, your piece. I apologize. You. Yeah. More, more uh, gratitude and more uh, graciousness. That's right. Th- that's wrong. Okay. What do you got? Moving forward, the two G's moving forward. I appreciate that, and I think that's the way to do it, Ryan. I just wanted to chime in. I think you might be a little bit surprised here. I just wanted to chime in and say that, you know, although, uh, you know, roses and thorns, you were you, st- you were a theatre major uh, once upon a time at, at Bull and Green State University, so you understand the roses and thorns. You know, first, the roses. A very entertaining conversation about, you know, going into the caves of the mind. I thought that was entertaining. Uh, And, you know, that was explorative. Uh, And I like that. Much like you were a spelunker. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Yes, yes. I I quite like it too. That's why I said it. Uh, Yeah, of course. I mean, it's not so much educational. I mean, that's the thorn part of it. But I do think it was, you know, it, it was... It was entertaining. And, well, that's uh, good. It m- m- might even be a little bit inspirational then. Oh, that's really? That's all I really wanted to say. Inspirational? Oh, no, no, that's really it. That's all, that's all really you got? That's you it. Keep going. I won't let you get back to the show here. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, shoot. If you're going to start calling me, you know, creative and inspirational, I might just let you, you know, keep chiming on in. But, you know, in the meantime, we'll just have to, you know, I guess... Get on with the show. Thank you, Nigel. I appreciate that. A spelunker of the mind. Um, yeah, I like that. I, you know, I'm a little claustrophobic when it comes to the cave situations. So I'm not so sure I would go into the uh, Rising Star cave system. And I'm also kind of entering my, uh, you know, my 
my uh, big beefy daddy phase of life. So I'm not sure I could fit through some of the crevices. Um, that's what I'm just, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I don't, you don't need to hear that kind of talk on this program. Um, so when it comes to the, the archetypes, the imagery and the symbols that we see in, uh, you know, hallucinations through the use of psychedelics, or visions and dreams, or even in the waking life, or through deep meditation. One can't wonder, where do these archetypes come from, and why were they necessary? And I think we can, we can get into that another time, because I think the, uh, you know, the necessariness, of, or the necessity, I should say, probably, of archetypes in general, it makes sense to me. It's the language of meaning, right? Wow, is that, a, that someone's probably already said that before, but much like the the alphabet of meaning, in a way of, you know, the English alphabet has twenty six letters, and without those twenty six letters, we don't have the words to be able to communicate effectively. Without archetypes, maybe we don't have the symbols or the symbology to infuse or communicate meaning through language. So maybe language is like the the surface and beneath the surface you have archetypes and symbols which are the you know that's where the real nutrients of language exist. So you mine into the ground to find the symbols and the meaning and the words are essentially the topsoil, which are necessary and which are needed. I'm not trying to be dismissive of words because words can be beautiful and they are beautiful in all types of languages. And when you start watching movies or television programs that are not in English, if you're only an English speaker like myself, I speak very rudimentary Spanish, you know, thanks to, you know, high school, college, and, you know, Duolingo right now. But there's so many beautiful languages, and you can truly appreciate it when you watch a TV show like Dark on Netflix. Please watch with subtitles so you can hear the actors speaking the dialogue in their native tongue and in, in the language it's intended to be presented or Tokyo Vice or, you know, Shogun. I'm watching both of those shows right now. They, they, they're both coming out with new episodes every week. Great shows. Uh, there's so much beauty in language. It's, you know, I can be overwhelmed by it. And... I enjoy this part of my life because I'm, you know, I find myself overwhelmed and overcome emotionally often. I was staring at the stars the other night and suddenly uh, I start feeling like I should be saying something to them. So I'm just like, I'd love to see you. I'd love to see you, or, you know, orbs or, you know, some lights flying around and then and then I realized, I don't know, that I don't need to see them to truly believe in them. And then I just start crying. It's like, oh my gosh, am I, am I, am I in like, am I in menopause? Is that a thing? Is that what they call that? They call it menopause, right? Um, oh, new moon's coming up. I can't wait. I'm going to be back in Florida continuing the investigation, by the way, BT dubs. And there will be a new moon happening during the investigation, which I'm very, very excited about. We're going to be doing CE5. We're going to be trying to talk to portals. We're going to be using, you know, uh, you know, a cutting edge ITC device. Um, I have a new iPhone that will arrive tomorrow. I've had the same iPhone for about, I don't know, five, over five years now. I, if you know me at all, you know that I don't like having brand new shiny stuff for the sake of brand new shiny. My 2006 Camry is a perfect example of that. It seems to be running okay. And I, you know, my plan is to keep using that car until I can't 
My buddy Mark sold me that car, uh, I don't know, seven years ago. It's almost got 300,000 miles on it now. I had about 50 or 60,000 miles when I bought it, I think. Although I'm, I'm getting, it's making me nervous. It's making me nervous. So I might be, might be getting something I can go camp out of at state parks and national parks um, that also gets um, good gas mileage. I don't need some gas guzzler out there. But yeah, so I don't need new and shiny. But I get in this new iPhone. I get in. I get in this new iPhone because it's got the camera that can do lidar. Wow, who was this guy? Well, I'll tell you. I, I get this new iPhone because it got, got the camera to do lidar. Okay, so here, getting this new camera because it's this new iPhone because it's got the camera that can do lidar. Yeah, I'm all 3D, 3D scan prints out on the trails and in the woods. Okay, very good. Who's this? Is this the ag aggressive paranormal investigator? That's right. And I'm going I'm to I'm LiDAR scan these prints. And then I'm going to 3D print them. Oh, okay. Instead of having to use plaster of Paris or something like that, you're going to 3D print Bigfoot prints? That's exactly what I'm going to do. And don't tell anybody because it's a secret. And I don't want people knowing about it because I want to be the first one to do it. So people can say aggressive paranormal investigator was the first one to do it. API. Wow, API. Uh, settle down API. Okay. It's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a fun idea and it's an idea that everyone should have access to. Well, I, I, well what if I'm the one who came up with it? Well, if you're the one who came up with it, good job. But did you invent LIDAR? Because I don't think you did. So if you didn't invent LIDAR scanning, I don't think you get to be the guy who invented it. But but what if I'm the one first one who does it? Well then what are you gonna buy you so you're gonna get up you're gonna buy a three D printer and I get it. I I understand that having the new iPhone that has the camera that's capable of doing LIDAR scans is very cool and wonderful, especially for paranormal investigating when you come across possible prints that actually is pretty rad i don't think you need to worry about being uh the first guy to do it the only guy to do it who cares about any of that stuff so i think everybody should be doing it okay so there's an there's a, there's a few different apps out there that are lidar scanner apps so you have to download an app and i'm pretty sure the one that i'm going to be using according to a recommendation from someone who's an archaeologist or, you know, in, you know, studying to be, studying archaeology um, is, it's like $30 a month or something. So my recommendation would be find a free trial and or just buy it for, you know, if you come across something out on the trail, that's when you buy it. Um, you know, because if you don't come across any prints, why buy the app or pay for the app if you're not even going to be using it? And then, gosh, if anybody knows anything about 3D printing, I'd love to chat with you because I do need to, you know, at the bequest of API, uh, Aggressive Paranormal Investigator over here, I got to get a, um, I have to get a 3D printer so I can print, uh, so I can print things in 3D. Um, you know, everything above board, you know, just like big footprints, things like that. Not, uh, not anything else. Or maybe, you know, fun little toys as well. Yeah, is that is that is that okay, API? Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. Okay, good. Wow, I mean, you just need. I got some magnesium upstairs. Maybe pop a couple. Pop a couple mags. Take a chill. Listen to a Monroe Institute guided meditation from the Expand app. You would think they sponsor me, but they don't. I don't need to be sponsored to extol the virtues of things I enjoy. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I've got some new gadgets that I want to get that I'm excited to tell you about at some point. I just, I, you know, I just don't, I need to win the Powerball. If I win the Powerball, everyone who listens to this, well, if I win the, I will tell you this. All kidding aside, I was getting ready to say something crazy, but if I win the Powerball, let me say it like this. When I win the Powerball, 
Everyone over at the Patreon page, I'm not trying to incentivize this, but I am. Anyone who's on the Patreon page, depending on the tier, you're getting hooked up. You are getting hooked up. There's going to be, it's going to be a party over there. When I win the Powerball, it's going to be a party. Love you. Talk to you soon. Oh, a live show's coming up. So, you know, check out ryanshairandcomedy.com. Uh, come see me do some live stand-up comedy. I'll be in Cincinnati tomorrow night. If you're listening to this, day drops at the Comet, 7 p.m., doing a comedy show. It's going to be a great time. And then uh, the following weekend, I believe I'm off to, I have to make a couple different trips to, uh, inside of the state of Florida before I head back west. And then I'll be hitting the ground running, doing shows in Los Angeles as soon as I get back, uh, you know, uh, in May. So, uh, yeah. So I hope to, and then I've got, you know, gigs in June and July, August, September. We're going to be doing all kinds of comedy. It's going to be great. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I hope you love yourself. And, you know, you're the one person you can count on for love. So, you know, do yourself a favor and, you know, do that. Be grateful for yourself. And. You know, try to stop some of the negative self-talk that we all fall into. And I know I fall into it. And we just got to, like, you know, do a little better job of loving ourselves. I love you. You deserve it. You're, you deserve love. And you're capable of being loved. I have to remind myself, I'm capable of being loved, too. So, yeah, uh, I hope to see you at a live show. But if I don't, I'll just see you at the watering hole on the astral plane.